can cross now to Washington to speak with Kyle Olson, an expert in emergency management at the Olson Group. Kyle, we heard there from some people who've decided to stay on in their homes despite the warnings coming from authorities. What should they do now? Well, you know, the easy answer would be say it would be uh, prayer. But the uh, the reality is is that every time you have an incident like this, you will have uh, a significant number of people who will choose to ride it out. Uh, in many cases, like some of the people you had uh, talking, uh, they've been through big storms before. They probably have water. They probably have food, and they're, they they may very well be in a uh, in a defensible position. But um, for many of the others, uh, you also heard uh, the, the gentleman saying, well, we'll wait for emergency services to come and, and sort of bail us out. And uh, in that case, it could be a very, very long wait. This storm is massive, um, but, uh, and, it, and it's got very fast winds and a lot of rain, but also it is slow moving. Uh, better, you know, people have compared this to Katrina. A better example might be to compare it to Harvey, which flooded so much of Houston a few years ago. Slow moving storms are going to dump a foot, a foot and a half, two feet of water. And with the winds coming in, the surge, the tidal surge, rescue is going to be a long time coming. And restoring power is going to be at best days for some parts of some parts of Louisiana. It's going to be weeks. And so they better hang on. And authorities there, Kyle, have said that they're prepared. How exactly do you prefer prepare for a Category 4 hurricane? Um, you know, they've got, they, they, they have solid plans in place. I mean, there, there are lessons that were learned um, in Katrina. There have been lessons learned in other hurricanes. Of course, they've had many over the years. Um, but the, uh, you know, by prepared, I think they, they have a plan. They are organized. They know where their resources are. There's not going to be any confusion about who is responsible for, um, for handling various issues such as, uh, such as rescue, um, providing uh, food, shelter, uh, that sort of thing. So, so in that in that sense, they are better prepared than they were five, six, ten, fifteen years ago. Uh, at the same time, uh, they are, there there are real limitations on how ready you can get for something that's going to uh, close your hospitals, shut down your power, and at worst potentially uh, breach your levees. In which case, you know you have you have flooding in areas that you really can't afford to have flooded. Well, some people in those Vox Pops there, they said that hopefully those levees will hold. Hopefully that will be the case. But what kind of damage are we talking about here, potentially? We've heard warnings that there could be storm surges up to five metres or 16 feet in your language. Yes. And, you know, a, a storm surge of even of even a uh, even just a metre is a, is a substantial amount of water, particularly given uh, how low uh, how low the lands are in in the uh, in Louisiana, the Louisiana Bayou. Um, Louisiana uh, has um, has a system of parishes rather than counties, which is what the norm in the rest of the country. Um, but many of them have evacuated their entire counties, or have tried to evacuate their entire counties. Um, because they know that um, power lines are going to be down, roads are going to disappear, literally disappear, uh, with these with these waters coming in, and um, you know, in, in some cases they're going to come back, and there won't be even any landmarks to use to get around. So the challenge is going to be is going to be dramatic, uh, and it's going to take a long time to restore. Um, some areas will, in all likelihood, never be restored. And the one thing that you said before, yes, the levee system was rebuilt after Katrina. It's believed to be much more stout, much more capable of withstanding a, uh, the impacts. But, um, you know, we're going to get through tonight to find out how well that plays out. And Kai, you mentioned hospitals earlier. Now, of course, this is all happening during the pandemic and a lot of hospitals in Louisiana, they're already full with COVID patients. We haven't had reports of casualties at this stage, but how much of a concern will that be for authorities there? There will be injuries. And injuries are going to need to go to hospitals. You said it exactly there. Ordinarily, when you have a hurricane coming in, uh, you evacuate patients away from the uh, the hospitals that are going to be in the impact area. You move people inland. Uh, you get your uh, your people that are not critical um, out, and uh, you you discharge early. When you've got people on uh, who are on oxygen. Uh, or on respirators, you don't have that option. When you've got hospitals inland that are that are at, at capacity and and more, 
with with COVID cases, you don't have any empty beds to move people to. So watching this, you're right. So far, there have not been reports of, of fatalities or major casualties. Unlikely that we're going to get through the next 24 hours without uh, without those numbers going up. That's going to pose another real challenge at the at the local level. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of federal assets moving in very very quickly and probably more more uh, more aggressively than normal, simply because the situation on the ground is so is so stressed already. And we'll be watching very closely here at France 24. Kyle, thanks so much for joining us. That's Kyle Olson, an expert in emergency management at the Olson Group.